Hi guys, welcome to another video. So this one, um, I didn't actually remember to do an intro as I set up in a bit of a rush. The farmer kindly messaged me a picture um, after he'd just been bailing up on some recently cut silage headlands of a whole load of crows and pigeons all mixed in together, um, telling me, let me know that they were up there basically. Um, which is good of him and he wanted his bales protected from the crows pecking holes in the silage wrap uh, so I was lucky enough to get the afternoon off work raced back to the house got the gun cartridges got up there and set up by the time I set up it was already gone two o'clock in the afternoon um, so I was more focused on getting some getting some birds down getting the job done and also getting you some footage uh, but that was basically the setup it was on the headlands of a recently cut silage field with some standing grass still left in the middle uh, the birds came in well very mixed shooting with pigeons and crows um, finally managed to find the mark a few times which always helps i uh, hope you enjoy the video My frustration's evident there, but realistically, only a minor inconvenience for five minutes. As ever, the birds took full advantage, of course. With all the distractions over and time marching on being an afternoon session, um, I took full advantage of the next few birds that came in quick succession, coming off the initial flock. No need to hold back, just started to try and build the bag as quickly as possible. complete range and variety of shots for the first four or five birds made a nice start to the afternoon. sure if anyone else finds this but first crow came in and switching from pigeons to crows can sometimes result in a miss for me but never mind we'll press on maybe a couple of misses then and there we go first crow down The next couple of hours uh, the shooting was really varied a complete mixture between pigeons and crows coming in from all directions all speeds some committing some flying by it was really good fun shooting as well as doing some pretty essential crop protection and hopefully limiting damage later in the year on the corn as well
this was the hide I was using that day. Um, it had to be a lot bigger than I would have wanted, purely because there was a level change in the floor there of about a foot. So I wanted to be all on one level to try and help my footwork and give my shooting the best chance. I think the problem with some of the crows that you'll see that flared is that it's only one layer of netting thick. So I think they were seeing my final movement as I stood to shoot, but it did the job. You can also see in the picture how close the decoys were forced to be to the hide due to only having the headland set up on a lot closer than what I would usually have them. Um, I never really intended for the birds to come to the head of the pattern there, be too close to shoot. Um, I was always intending for them to fly over where the standing grass finished and to shoot them out there, which is generally what happened. The pigeon decoys were placed in a U shape or horseshoe pattern and the crows were just randomly spread out um, with a fair gap between each decoy to try and make it as realistic as what I'd seen the other live crows earlier in the field when I drove up. As ever, the majority of the decoys are placed facing into the wind roughly, um, which was coming over my left shoulder as I stood in the hide, making for a perfect wind and perfect setup really. And that presented me with shots from sort of 20 yards out to about 35, 40. This was probably the longest shot that I had that day. I was quite pleased to have connected with that one. Of course, I had to follow that with an easy miss.
evening drawing on, uh, the birds, they dried up a bit, um, so I called this the last shot of the day. The total bag was 47 birds. As ever, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and check out my other videos.